Hi, and welcome to Rosebread Homestead, and I've been wanting to do this one for quite a few weeks. Um, a few weeks ago, for the first time in my life ever, ever, I bought some hard white wheat. My entire life, I have always used hard red wheat. And because it's the reason is because that's what I grew up on. That's what dad always had at home for us. That's what mother always made bread from was hard red winter wheat. It was dad's favorite. I never even thought of trying something else. But I've been reading a few things and some of our subscribers have wanted to know if I like the white wheat better than the red for bread. And so um, with a little bit of research, I'm finding out that maybe there's a difference. And so today is a big bake-off and we're going to see which one I end up liking. So we'll get started in just a moment. So I've pulled some out of these two bins. This is the, and it is hard white. Um, and you can, if you look closely, you can see that these kernels are just a little bit fatter. These are longer and skinnier. This is the red winter wheat, hard red winter wheat. Uh, the protein is um, a little bit higher in the hard wheats. And um, depending on which list you look at, they are uh, either 11 or 12 or somewhere kind of in that neighborhood. So they're both pretty high in protein, which is a good thing. Okay, so I have um, my bread recipe that I um, have made the video on, first lessons in bread baking, and then lesson number two was half and half. The recipe that we're going to be using is at in the description of that video. So if you want the recipe, please refer there because I'm not going to put it in this one. Uh, what I have done is that I have divided the recipe in half. And so I have half of the dry ingredients here and half of the dry ingredients here. Cup and a half of flour, these are identical. Cup and a half of flour, tablespoon of yeast, uh, some salt and some sugar. And, um, and then off to the side, I have just freshly ground over in my wheat meal. In fact, the it, flour is still warm. Uh, some of the red winter hard wheat and some of the white, which is right here. Now, I've got to keep these straight all the way through. So this is the hard white side and this is the hard red side. And so I'm just going to go ahead and mix up both of these exactly using the method that is shown in that other video. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because it is completely included in that other um, video. So the first thing I'm going to do is just mix up the dry ingredients. And then I am going to start, I have a cup and a half of white in each one of these, and I'm going to start with a cup of the, and this is 100% wheat flour. And you can see the contrast of the brown and the white there, whereas over here, it's much less of a contrast. So there is just a little bit of difference there. All right, then I need to um, whisk those in. In the other video, which is lesson two on uh, first lessons in bread baking, I talk about the temperature of the water. A lot of um, other people say that it should be 110, I really disagree. Now, my yeast that I use is instant. You can also use um, the other powdered yeast, whichever one you want. But I use water that is about the same temperature as your wrist, and that will be just under 100 degrees because I want it a little bit of a slower rise. And I'm just gonna put a cup of that water in each one of these. The water, the amount of water is a cup and a fourth. So I'm going, to be going, I'm going to go ahead and put, just using these metal measuring cups, a cup and a fourth of water in each of these bowls. Okay. 
And then I do need to put in the oil along with the water, and it's about a tablespoon and a half. Splitting that recipe, tablespoon and a half. Done with that. There's also some sugar in each of the bowls too. Food for the yeast. And you may remember, if you've seen that other video, that I like mixing the bread by hand so that I can get the feel for it. Now each of these will make one loaf. Okay, so I don't know if the absorption rates of these flours are different. We will find out. And I just like to put it right out on the countertop. And knead from there. And if I need any extra flour, I will be using the wheat flour. Now, it, um, this is a gluten flour because it is a wheat, both the... Um, all-purpose white and the wheat are gluten so we need to develop that gluten so it will make a good bread so I knead for a little while and kneading can be tedious if you're doing it on your own I need more flour so I'm going to put some wheat out there you can certainly do this if you have a stand mixer and a dough hook What is not well known by a lot of people is that you can knead for a few minutes and then you can let the bread completely rest for 10 or 15 minutes and it will still be developing that gluten. All right, we're going to put this one to rest and we're going to work on this one. I don't think it will take any more flour. All right, we're gonna let these sit for about 15 minutes and we'll be back. It has been 15 minutes and while we were off camera, I cleaned these bowls. So, you can tell that this one has risen just a little bit. It's all puffy and nice, but we're going to degas it and knead it some more. Just one last time for about three or four minutes. Okay, that feels about right. So I'm going to just put a little bit of oil in the bottom of this. Spread it around with the bread itself. And then we're going to let this rise. And I love plastic rather than dish towels. And this is the white wheat. This is the hard red, also has risen. Degas and need some more. Same thing. Okay, now, um, the next step is to let these rise until they're about double. And I always get asked, well, how long does that take? And the answer is, the bread will tell you. Don't set your buzzer, don't figure that it's going to be a certain amount of time let the bread tell you. It's when it's doubled in size and um, it's all poofed up and we can tell that when it is proof. So my kitchen is quite warm today. My guess is that we're gonna be back here in about a half an hour. So whenever it is, we will see you then. It has been a half an hour, so let's check. Oh goodness, yes. This one is certainly done. Very soft, okay. Degassing it. And more flour. Okay. Now we're gonna shape and just put in the pan. And 
and I do have a W written right here for white. And probably another half hour. Okay, now we'll do this one. And getting some flour out here. It's also very soft. Okay, this is going to be better. The rectangle is about the same size as the pan, so I'm going to do this tightly. R for red. And we'll be back in about a half an hour to check on these. My alarm just went off. It's been 30 minutes. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, this is overproofed. We're going to bake it anyway because this is a bake off. Look at the difference between those two the white and the wheat. Made this very same recipe, the very same thing. So, this is a much softer dough, it is easier to rise. It took up more flour with the liquid. This is a heavier dough. So I've got to get these in the oven. There it is right now, 375. I'm going to cook them for about 25 minutes. Then we'll take their temperature and we'll get them out as quick as we can. And we'll be back after they've cooled a little bit so that we can take a look at the crumb. Well, here we are. These are now cooled down well enough to uh, cut. And when I took the temperature, uh, they were between 190 and 195, which is exactly the right uh, temperature to take them from the oven. And they both have beautiful all around browning of the uh, crust. But obviously the um, hard white wheat is lighter, more airy than the heavier red. So let's cut into the red and see what we've got. The crumb is nice and even. This one was not overproofed, um, which is what I was used to, and I didn't even uh, check it any sooner, which is why the white got overproofed. Now the white, actually if I hold this up in profile, you see that it has a hernia, or I don't know, maybe it's a tumor, <laughs> but it's overproofed, and so this bubble really grew. So let's cut into it and see what the crumb looks like for it. It's a bigger loaf all the way around. Okay, so if you compare the two crumbs, you can really see a difference there in the size of the air pockets. Both are really a beautiful loaf of bread, so I don't, I'm gonna just kind of mash that bubble down right there, so not too noticeable. And so, um, this is a revelation to me. Um, this is kind of the size of a loaf I'm used to when I do a half and half. I don't ever use, I know a lot of people use additives to really fluff their bread up. <clears throat> I don't, I never have. So now all I would have to do is just use the white um, wheat instead of the red wheat to make bread or maybe a mixture of the two. So this was very telling for me and I am glad to know the difference now between the bread made with the white wheat and um, the red wheat. So um, if this is interesting to you, perhaps it will help you decide which wheat you're going to use when you do um, whole wheat bread, either half and half or even a full loaf. This looks to me more like a loaf of pure white bread rather than having 100% whole wheat flour in it. So that's a game changer for me. And I'm really glad that I tried this out. So thank you for being with us with this exciting, uh, great bake-off. And we will see you at our next video.